this season. Minus 52 with the win. Arctic blizzards hit Buffalo with a vengeance. I want that wind right now before we open our door. Joe melts down. Joe is in a scary mood this morning. I can hang around on a field and I'm late. Well, that's what happened. You was in charge, you? Well, yeah. As new planes. How the hell did that happen? Trigger new troubles. Disconnect the ground power. Rookies fail. We just don't need you anymore. If you don't pull your weight, you're not gonna last. Planes get pushed to the breaking point. The stream of fire from the engine to the ground. Everything's all cooked, basically. When we hit the trees, holy shit. And the feds try to shut Joe down. Shutting it down on Friday, that's Friday. They put the gun to my head, I didn't. This is uh, pretty badass. Some hit new highs. Oh, no. oh, <laughs> I wanted to do this forever. As dreams come true. And he's fast. <laughs> others go down in flames. Son of a bitch. Take it over. Hang on to your hats, boy. It's an early December morning on the Buffalo ramp. And the temperature with wind chill is beyond brutal. This is far got to be the coldest day of the year yet. Minus 52 with the wind. You know, something's going to break. It's going to be today. The crew is warming the C-46, getting it ready to haul Christmas goods up the Mackenzie Valley. And flying this mission is Captain Devin Brooks. What's up, boys? Typical morning before Christmas pitch black, freezing cold. But it's not so typical for a rookie co-pilot. Morning? Yeah. What? Where does he usually tie this? Sam Storm has been working the ramp since he moved here from Victoria, BC, nine months ago. He's about to get a rocky initiation to flying at Buffalo. Definitely want to fly the C-46 the most. Being able to master or control that thing is it's really cool. Taxied out, everything seemed fine. Okay, let's go. Back on the right, here we go. The fire alarm started going. I don't know if we've gotten up to 60 knots yet. going on here? So we thought it might have been an indication problem. What the heck is going on? Turn that camera off. And then we all seen it light up. Engine fire. Devin aborts takeoff. The moment is caught on an airport security camera. Evacuate, evacuate, evacuate. Roger, Buffalo emergency response team on its way. The worst case scenario is letting that fire get into the fuel tanks. It was just a stream of fire from the engine to the ground, and it was quite something. It was burning pretty good, and that's when we ordered the evacuation. The fire trucks were there in no time, and they sprayed the whole plane with foam. When they're there within a minute or two, that's pretty impressive. TXW is towed to the back lot, coated in fire retardant. What's happening, Devin? Oh, he's a real cluster now. TXW won't be going anywhere for a bit. Junior C-46 mechanic Chris Staples is the first to take a look. So as you can see, that cylinder right there, and right here, you see these nuts here. Well, those nuts aren't on there. Nothing, it's, it's completely gone. Next, senior mechanic Cliff Dyson has a look. And it started pumping oil all there like a bitch, like a bleeding hurt. It caught the exhaust on fire and caused all this damage here. That's what, that's what I said. You said you saw fire dripping out of the bottom of the cowling, right? Yeah, it looked, yeah, it looked like gas on the ground, though. If the fire kept burning, if we weren't able to extinguish it, it could, it could lose a wing within a matter of minutes. The thing that sucks the most is this is a freshly overhauled engine. We just put it on a couple weeks ago. Mikey's just pulling into work. This isn't going to be a good day. 
I get a phone call saying that this TXW has an engine fire and they have evacuated the airplane. Word of the incident has spread through Yellowknife. <sighs> yep. And reporters want to know what happened. Right here. Right away, Mikey has to defend Buffalo's safety record. OK, so what happened this morning? The C-46 aircraft is very, very rare to have a, an engine fire on takeoff, uh, especially uh, this type of airplane. Uh, We've been here for 43 years. Uh, we have an excellent safety record. Fire on an airplane is very, very serious. But uh, honestly, air travel in the north is dangerous. It, if you think flying is bad, try driving on the roads. Yeah, and today's the coldest night, or yeah. the coldest day so far. You know what, you can't really worry about what people think. You gotta worry about the facts and the truth. And as of right now, we're more concerned of getting uh, the, fr the job that airplane was supposed to do is what we're trying to do, so. Buffalo's only backup C-46 AVO is in for a massive refit. So they've got to repair TXW fast. Christmas rush and we're way behind the ball this year. In the cargo terminal, freight is already piling up. This is December, it's our busiest month. We're on track to be the busiest December we've ever had. How am I rating this up? It's a boom or bust situation all the time. We're either too busy, not busy enough. Joe is hoping for a quick solution. He wants the mechanics to fix the engine while it's still on the wing. I'm looking for all the stuff that's cooked. Well, I think Joe doesn't really want to change it right now, but it's got to come off simple as that. And once we strip it down, we can see what we got. And, you know, it's faster just to put another engine on. Joe finally relents. The engine has to come off. We diagnosed it. He just doesn't like the answer we gave Because it's going to cost him a bunch of money. And, you know, he's taking it like any owner. He's just uh, making sure that we are making the financially correct decision for him. Yeah, I got this bad boy over here anyway. Everything's all cut, basically. Harbors had it, all these well, lines had it. Getting this plane airworthy will take days. For Mikey, that's too long to make anxious customers wait. So he ships to a backup, a Lockheed Electra that Joe bought last year. Guys, we're kind of getting shy on the old 46. They're burning up. He tells the crew to get it ready. But once they get inside... Chucky just called me. It looks like the lecture's got a crack windshield. It must have cracked sometime today. Like, like it would have been noticed before. Like when they're flying? Or is this weather or temperature change? I think it's called an old window. Holy shit. See, when they start delaminating like this, it's only a matter of time before this happens. Electric Captain Brian Harrison checks out the damage. A little bit of an issue. Uh, it's going to have to be changed. There's it's going to no, get changed no, hopefully tomorrow night. There's no question about it. It's going to have to be changed. We're, we're grounding this airplane. Oh, this puts us 24 hours sets, behind. Sets us back. Yeah. At the Buffalo Courier Terminal, Christmas cargo is piling up. Happened? It looks like the lecture's got a crack windshield. And Mikey discovers a problem with the backup turboprop Electra. There's no question about it. It's going to have to be changed. Right when we were supposed to be the busiest, you know, Murphy uh, swung his magic wand, and it, that magic wand ended up hitting the windshield of uh, XFC uh, cracked. We're going to go try and find a left-hand windshield for Electra. This is a secret stash. See if we can find a freaking window with all this Electra stuff. A museum would kill to have most, most of this stuff. Ugh. Way too much stuff up here. We got a window here, and it's a right hand. No good. Right hand. Damn it. Look what we got here, windshield. It's a left hand, too. 
Oh, it's cracked. It's cracked. That's a pretty big crack. I don't think that one's gonna work for us. The hunt continues. 1,600 kilometers away at Buffalo's Hangar in Red Deer, Alberta, Rod McBrien jumps into the hunt. After digging through a boneyard of parts, he finds a spare left-hand windshield. Last one that we know of, so uh, hopefully nobody drops it. Sorry, we'll we'll go to Red Deer right away. Oh, okay. Mikey decides to send the twin-engine King Air to pick it up. And Joe decides he's going too. You know, to get stuff done, you really got to send my father a lot of times. Okay, we'll get her fueled up, ready to go, whatever they are. Okay. But that's really sending, you know, dynamite into a schoolyard. It's uh, sometimes doesn't work out that well. Joe's got an ulterior motive. There's another Electra sitting in Red Deer that he bought last spring. It hasn't moved since. Uh, right now, the plan is we're going to go down and uh, pick up that other Electra. He's taking Captain Brian Harrison and Engineer Corey Dodd with him to fly it back to Yellowknife. He just hasn't told anybody in Red Deer. Back in the office, Mikey is training a new rampy. Prefkar Moni moved here all the way from India. She can spell me out. And he starts with the job no one else wants. Good morning, no flyer race, Professor speaking. OK. Oh, you got charged twice for the flight? I can transfer your call if you want. Prefkar came here to chase his dream. When I was uh, six years old, I said to my mom, like, one day when I grew up, like, I really want to be a pilot. And my mom is like, what, you want to be a pilot? Like, because in India, like, you know, everyone wants to be, like, an engineer or a doctor. You know, I said, like, no, like, every time I look into the sky, I feel like I want to fly that plane. But the cracking cold of Yellowknife is like a smack in the face to a guy from India. I'm taking off my shoes and my socks because my socks are so wet. But when I told my friends I got hired for Buffalo Airways, they were like, you will come back in a month. No, I will survive. I will work for the Buffalo. I will fly those DC-3 one day, and then you guys will say that. That's what I told them. Sam! But before Prefkar flies anywhere, he's getting a lesson from the veteran Rampies. Prefkar, you ready? Yeah. A wing jumping lesson. I hope you break your knees today. <laughs> you don't have a toque? You gotta freeze yours off. If it's a PNR, I don't like it, it'll be easier. <laughs> Our teaching craft car how to jump, we've always had to give them a boost, so we're starting to learn how to jump already. No snow, it's gonna be pretty easy. Like it'll be easier. <laughs> oh, come on. It's only like waist height. Oh. <laughs> don't psych yourself out, just jump. Get rid of the gloves if you have mitts or something. Use your forward momentum. Get your knee on the grip tape. <laughs> Don't think about it. Just jump. That is a challenge. And, like, I can do it. <laughs> In Red Deer, Joe arrives with his Electra crew. Only problem is, nobody told Rod about Joe's plan. The King Air arrived. Somebody had the windshield ready, and the crew for the Electra were there. We were kind of under the impression the airplane was going to be ready to go. But when we got there, basically it was sitting in a snowbank. A lot of them, that's pretty on there pretty good. Yeah, I'm sure they That wing's pretty bad. Yeah, we got to be realistic about it, too. Joe decided that we were leaving now with the Electra. That was not our plan. It wasn't communicated. I had no idea you guys were going to attempt to leave today. But Joe's not about to let a little miscommunication stand in his way. Hey, do you, you have a, a, a ladder here I can do the back of the wing with? Yeah, we'll take it out to the trail and edge, and I'll go get it the proper broom. Well, we got to clean the snow off so we can de-ice the airplane. We got to get to work. Yeah, that was bad. That's why we were trying to put it in the hangar. So, well, well, guys, we'll put it in the hangar. I don't care as long as we go. I've been faced with this same ice many, many times. I just take the top layer off with a scraper. Ronnie, we can get wings better than that. Come on, let's go. 
We could have left in the morning. We could have did it at a slow pace, but sometimes that's not the way owners want it done. He wants to get it home, so we'll get it home. These are the kind of brims you need. These good stiff ones. Don't worry about the ice. Just get the snow off. I want my good broom so I can tweak this. So the guy needs an air hose to blow it off. Brooms can clear the snow, but not the ice. The electric was completely covered in ice. We were in a big, mad panic for whatever reason. Joe and Brian start de-icing the wings the old school way. We got a little bit of alcohol here. We're gonna see if that'll take the biggest parts of the ice off the wings. But with a thousand square feet of wing, this could take a while. You know, it just turns into a big gong show. You know, mops and middle brooms and stuff. There's a whole bunch of ice in between the flop and the aileron here, too. So. There's just too much ice. I wanted to go as soon as possible, but I, I, the way this is looking, I don't know when we're going to get away. The window scraper is on a 116,000-pound airplane. <laughs> Jesus Christ, it's like shooting ants. After an hour of scraping, Joe gives in and calls in backup. It gets the job done, but it's not cheap. Probably took a few years off his life because he can't stand paying for de icing fluid. Four grand I just got. In less than 15 minutes, the de-iced Electra is ready to gas up and go. We called the fuel truck. We had to put on about 20,000 pounds of fuel. The precious windshield for the other Electra is loaded on board. I guess we're gonna set it over back here. You want to break it? Oh, we got it. Yeah. <laughs> but it seems this plane is in no hurry to leave. Underwing fuel panel wouldn't power up. Now there's a new problem. The underwing fuel pump dies. So that gives a level of tension or frustration. It was just unfortunate it had to be in the worst possible day. Normally, a pump pulls fuel into all four wing tanks from below. The broken pump means fuel has to be gravity fed from above, one tank at a time. This will turn what is normally a quick job into a four hour ordeal. Okay, so, uh, you want 3, they also have to calculate the weight of the gas in each wing so the plane is balanced. Just convert pounds to liters to gallons to uh, kilograms <laughs> to newton meters. Yeah. Captain Brian has seen this movie before. Oh, we're just going to go down, jump in, and come back. Yeah, I, that never works. I've been going to get airplanes that have been in storage for a lot of years, and you never just go down, get in it, start it, and come back. And now the tension is starting to rise. Why do you seem a bit frustrated? Well, I'm not frustrated at all. Because Mikey's a bastard for not telling us this bullshit. It's not really fair like, uh, to not tell us till 2 o'clock in the afternoon. We could have did something else like put it in yesterday. Rod phones Mikey to vent. Hey. Hey, Rod. I told you all for two days it would not be ready. It was under three feet of snow. We got airplanes flying and customers. You know what? I told you whether it was right or wrong. How long would it take? And it wasn't. It wasn't because I was being lazy. It was because I was being realistic. Uh, 
I wasn't there to defend myself uh, because I was here working. Um, so I think I might have been used as a villain. For Mikey, all these delays mean another day down the drain and more angry customers. Hey, Tim, it's Mikey. Yeah, I got some more bad news. Yeah, no, they're, they're not airborne. The aircraft are down. Uh, all three of my airplanes are actually uh, out right now. Yeah, sorry about that. We'll head her hard tomorrow. With no cargo planes ready to fly, Mikey's busiest Christmas might not happen. Middle of the afternoon on the Buffalo ramp. Prefcar, give him a hand with the fence. And rookie Prefcar Moni is learning to prep the DC-3. Nan. Yeah. But he's having trouble with one important task. How do you get stuck that? Oh, I had to jump on the wing. He's scared to jump up on that wing, I think. You get a little hesitant. He hesitates right before he gets up on there. I had to jump on the wing. But, uh... Over the years, rampies of all shapes and sizes have tried to master the wing jump. Or not. Oh, there you go. Now you're trying. But Prefcar has been getting a lift. <sighs> yeah. Can I take it off the wing like that? Prefcar is a work in progress. He's a bit behind. Still seems to not be able to figure it out. Oh. You saved me. Yeah. No, I tried a couple of times. I couldn't able to. Well, I need something like a boost up or something. Yes, I'm shorter. That's why. The other rampies are getting tired of helping. If he can't jump up on the wing, he's got to figure out another way to get, get the tents off. Hurry up there, prep car, man. Oh, yeah. I'm falling. Waiting on you. It is cold. If Prefcar can't step up, his days at Buffalo were numbered. In Red Deer, the sun is down before the fuel tanks are full. I'm going to see if all four engines run and uh, get this machine to Yellowknife. Okay, you're ready to rock and roll? Yes. Okay, what is the internet? Rotating there? Is it rotating? It's rotating. At 8 p.m., the tired crew is finally ready for takeoff. Disconnect the board. There you go. Well, and then it did something a little funky. Just here now. The power dips. This 60-year-old plane seems to be jinxed. had a starter disintegrate. Disconnect the ground power! Luckily enough, uh, Corey was there and he aborted the start before it accelerated and, and really had a problem. Cold, cold has an extreme effect on the airplane. As soon as you park a big airplane, the gremlins come out and they start chewing and eating away at things. So you've always got issues when you go to fly it away again. Jinxed or not, Joe wants this plane in the air tonight. So they changed the starter. They took one off the, one of the other airplanes down there, put it on this one, and then proceeded to start do the whole thing over again. An hour later, Brian and crew are ready for takeoff again. We start taxiing it. We get basically close to the end of the runway. Kill the hydraulic. I'm gonna boost light. Oh, see, look at it. You see, it's gone. And we notice the number two hydraulic system is going down. You see, it's gone. It's going to zero. We're losing fluid like a mother. Shut it off. The number two hydraulic pump decided it was gonna quit working. Where's the elevator light. Your elevator is very important. It controls the pitch of the airplane up and down. We can't leave without that. Yeah, back. We want to get going, but you can't leave with broken things. You're signing your death warrant if you're going to try and fly like this. We taxi back again. Shut her down again. We 
We're trying to move this airplane and get the job done. It's just, we can't get a break. And that sometimes is kind of what the universe gives you when you get in a panic. It's another setback. Rod wants to call it a night, but Joe says no. Well, did they just take a pump out of the trailer? They got to take one out of BQ. Don't have a spare one like this. So like I said, it would take what hour you get out and what hour you get in. You know, we, we left the only if at 8 o'clock in the morning. Now it's out, and it's now 8 o'clock here, so it kind of looks, looks a little grim right now. Joe wouldn't give up on the fact that we had to get it to Yellowknife and uh, until I still have no idea what was the panic was. I just didn't want to pick that battle. They're just charging up one of the accumulators and we're going to go and try take number three. <laughs> this third time's a charm, I think. Watch where we got power. Fired everything back up, taxi out, and... and stable. Next we got flywheel. Huge winds up here. They may be off the ground, but the gremlins aren't done yet. Your altimeter doesn't work at all, eh? The co-pilot's altimeter and airspeed gauges are faulty. Ryan still works. Are you watching yours when you rotate it? Yeah. Your up. Then the GPS goes out. Oh, this ordeal ain't over yet. Your altimeter doesn't work at all, eh? Corey and Brian are trying to fly this frozen Lockheed Electra home. But their instruments are haywire. Are you watching yours when you rotate it? Yeah. Now they have to resort to flying by map. Will that GPS give you any altitude information? Using compass and landmarks to find their way in the dark. Too low. Terrain. Two hours later, long past midnight, their home at last. Well, it's now 1.30 in the morning and uh, got a bunch of little glitches, but can hopefully uh, tomorrow we'll fix the snag. They're now two days delayed getting cargo in the air and running out of options. The next morning in the Buffalo hangar, the mechanics scrambled to repair the burnt engine of the C-46. <sighs> and a broken windshield on the Electra after a string of bad luck. As you can see behind me, we got both of our airplanes on the hangar. None of them are flying. It's a race against the clock. We gotta get these airplanes airborne. But today, the boss is not here. That's a used window. Joe is still in Red Deer, and it's up to the mechanics to get the job done. Uh, when my father leaves the hangar, it, uh, nothing really changes because we still do exactly what we're doing, but uh, he doesn't come around and change everything. Get your shit done, and you don't have to worry about somebody looking over your shoulder. We'll see what happens when, uh, when Joe gets back uh, this afternoon. <laughs> When Joe arrives from Red Deer, Whew. he quickly puts the pressure on. You gotta get this freight moving. Bang, bang, bang. We had obligations. Our warehouses were filling up with groceries and their shelves were being depleted. With both the C-46 and Electra still under repair in the hangar, the Christmas cargo backlog is getting worse. Yeah, hey, Electra out there, nobody to pull a power cart. So Joe changes the plan. He decides to use the backup Electra that arrived last night from Red Deer. Oh my. But this plane needs Chuck's okay before it can fly. We're removing this thing. 
right here from now so we can get those two out of the hangar. And this one's gonna go in. The windshield repair will have to wait. Chuck needs to move the inside Electra outside and the outside one in. Oh, it's a beautiful day. The temperature outside is minus 40. Good. Now you're good. Let's go. Come on. Every time the hangar doors are opened, Joe loses hundreds of dollars worth of heat. Well, you lose half a day every time you pull the airplanes in and out of the hangar once. It just takes that long for the whole hangar to, to warm up. Twenty below in this hangar right now. The move takes twenty minutes, and the mechanics aren't looking forward to working in a meat locker. We're all freezing. All the airplanes are cold. If you've ever touched dry ice, that's what it's like working on that thing right now. We're basically working in gloves all day because the metal of the airplanes are frozen. If you wind up touching that too much, you get frostbite on your fingertips inside the hangar. But Joe's got no time for whiners. This new plane has got to get ready to go. Uh, get the tin in there and wash the floor good. Put some wheels on it. Go. I love the day. Cool. Now who's got to fix it? Well, who the f you think? The guy with no hair. Bags under my eyes. That's the guy that's got to fix it. So Chuck pops open the hood and gets an eyeful of an airplane purchased as is. Yeah, they will an excellent deal for us. Chuck, maybe not think so. <laughs> Anybody that sells anything. <laughs> like, if I'm going to sell my Skidoo, am I going to put a thousand dollars into it? Right, see, guys that in these airlines that buy these airplanes and think they're perfect, ought to shake their heads. I can't see that thing. Oh, come on. For us right now, this is a, not a really great time to bring a new airplane online. But Joe's determined to get at least one of his cargo planes back on the job. You've got to be able to slide down the rail, eh? No matter what it takes. Cold! <laughs> Outside, new rampy Pref Car Moni is feeling the cold. My toes are really numb. In India, we always wear sandals. We don't wear shoes as well. Freezing cold. Ah, oh. <laughs> the time I left India, it was like plus 35, and I landed in Canada, it was like minus 50 with the wind chill. And I'm like, wow, this is the wrong time I landed in Canada. <laughs> oh yeah, my fingers and my toes are really cold. Minus 34, really? Well, it's getting colder and colder every day. I'm <laughs> like, okay, I need to buy proper clothing and everything. Today is the day. He's decided to spend a chunk of his hard-earned cash on some Canadian couture. Freezing cold. Uh... At a Yellowknife outfitter. Yeah, I need something really warm. Like, I don't know, my, I guess still my feet are frozen. I feel Got like it. it. Yeah. <laughs> Those are size 13 to 15. Something smaller. So we have anything from minus 40 to minus 100. Yeah, something that will be better. Works better. So it's good? Yeah, it's minus okay. 70 boots. I don't want to freeze to death. <laughs> I don't care about the money or something because I really need to keep myself warm. Holy fake final box. To keep myself warm? <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> no more cold. No more whining. Back at Buffalo. She's a ball of snakes. Chuck has determined that getting the new Electra airworthy could take weeks. Prop snakes, hydraulic snakes, avionic snakes. Lots of shit. It's sat for so long and right here. You gotta keep running these things. You can't pull them over a snowbank or sit for a year and really expect them to run. These are the type of airplanes to be run 24 7. So Joe shifts to plan C. Hey, I need this airplane, eh? I don't wanna shut this airplane down. 
go back to fixing the Electra with the broken windshield, which means swapping out planes for the second time today. Well, I don't want to take it outside and freeze it. Is the batteries in it? Yeah, they are. Yeah. Get them out of there. We don't leave it outside. Okay, see how fast you get these doors open and close on the You got the heaters off? Yeah, we turned them off. You know? This is an organized confusion. What's, what's going on, guys? Organized confusion. Wait. Oh, it's minus 40. We got to open the door. Nothing could be simpler around here. Are you ready to go? Nothing we ever do is organized or anything. It's just kind of a spur of the moment. We're more of a, a panic airline. We react to what hap what's happening at the moment. I don't know what the plan is. Plans are always up around here. Plan changes 100 times before it's actually done. The constant change of plans is wearing them all down. We worked till 9.30 last night, and we we're back here at 6. And we've been doing that pretty much every day this week. Starting to get a little bit burned out here. At the end of another long day, there's still no plane ready and no cargo in the air. Well, I don't see no forklift. These guys aren't doing nothing. Before dawn, Buffalo's DC-3 freighter arrives from Hay River with more Christmas cargo that must get up the Mackenzie Valley. So it's all hands on deck, and even Prefcar joins in to help. I'm pretty slick, Prefcar. Prefcar, move those boxes. OK. It's not that cold. I'm OK. Prefcar, sporting $500 worth of Arctic gear, can now focus on his goal. Hopefully, I'll be flying in a couple of months. Flying these planes. Yeah. But today, Buffalo needs more than hardworking rampies. They need a working plane. Yeah. We're getting one screw at a time here. They're pinning their hopes on this Electra that needs a new windshield. Mechanic Adam Smith has started to remove the broken one, but it's slow going. There's a bajillion screws here. I think they put these things in with a drill. Buffalo Joe is pushing everyone hard to have the C-46 flying freight later today. That's his job. He runs the company. He is supposed to yell at us. It's a company. It's not a freaking government. We're not running a deficit here. We're running a business. Hey, Chucky! Come here! I need a hand. Bill, can you get it off that? Pull down on it. Got it? Okay. Look at this junk. Adam finally gets the old window out and discovers the reason why it cracked. Well, that, that's tile and tub silicone, and that's door gasket sealant. And if you look at all of this shit here, that's like mold and corrosion and shit. All this mess will need to be cleaned up. Oh. Language. That's agile. Actually, why don't we just put a piece of plywood in there? They don't need to see. Well, they got instruments, eh? Yeah. We're getting to the point where we have so much work right now, especially with these electrics, that we all have to come together. Oh, she's heavy. Exactly. That's why I didn't want to do it by myself. The twenty thousand dollar replacement is very carefully raised into place. <sighs> this time, they want to make sure the job's done right. Your way at times. That means taking their time. There. She's awesome. in. Thanks, buddy. You didn't even drop it. That's the easy part. It's not like a car. You can't just pull up to a shop and they do it in 30 minutes and you go home. Like, this is a two-day event. Uh, as he puts the windshield in, he's got to put a, what's called PRC, which is sort of like a, a really high-end aviation glue. And once that goes in the airplane, we've got to wait 12 to 24 hours for it to cure. Now, that means no door openings, no nothing. The hangar's got to stay at a certain temperature. It also means that this plane isn't going anywhere today. Very, very finicky shit here. As long as everything is prepped properly, it'll all go together right. You can't skip any steps doing this. Across the hangar, the other crew is still fixing the C-46. Chris Staples has MacGyvered a solution to the cause of the engine fire. Uh, the lock nut came off, the stud goes with it. You got oil pouring out of that cylinder, so 
That's what caused the fire. So we're going around all the studs and all the cylinders and we're gonna lock wire them up. But as the sun goes down on day four, Adam is still turning screws on the new windshield. There's a lot of freaking screws here. So I got the nose jacked up. So I gotta get up off the stand because I can't reach to get a good, good grip on the freaking screws. So now I wind up standing on the freaking nose of the airplane. Doing some kind of freaking god awful made up yoga move here. By day's end, neither the C46 or the Electra are ready to go, and the cargo backlog at Buffalo keeps piling up. How are you gonna do this one, press car? This morning, new Rampy Prefcar, outfitted in new boots, is determined to get one small leap closer to his dream. You gotta learn how to jump on that wind, basically from standing up. You're not always gonna have a lot of room, especially in the wintertime, you got frostbite or the stairs. But this time, a frostbiter and stairs are in his way. It doesn't matter what kind of job you're doing. Oh, Put your hard work and you'll, <laughs> you'll get reward for it. <laughs> Almost there. Yeah! Woo! There you go. Now I really don't need to help give you a boost. No. <laughs> I jumped by myself. Woo! <laughs> An hour later, the mechanics pull out a Christmas surprise for Mikey and Joe. A C-46, repaired and ready just five days after it caught fire. Yeah, we're gonna go flash it up here and load it up for the valley. Hopefully be out of here in a couple hours. Even better, one Electra has a new windshield. She'll be out tomorrow morning. The big cheese even came up and asked me. At last, Buffalo crews can stop fixing and start flying. And Mikey can finally deliver some good news to his customers. Hey, Jim, it's Mikey. Yeah, we're back in business. We're going to be airborne soon, and I'll phone you at the ETAs. Cool. Yeah, as soon as I know him, you know him. Thanks. Bye. You know, we got the Electra booked every day but Christmas Day for the next month. The Electra's going out tomorrow, so that's 60,000 pounds in, in two days. Uh, our record, I think, for the month is 360. You know, we're on track to be our biggest month ever. And even after all the headaches, Joe seems to be in a good mood. So we'll have a Christmas this year, right? For almost 70 years, this rugged C-46 cargo plane has flown everything from combat duty to Arctic ice storms. And once again, Joe's trusted old warbird has put Buffalo back where it belongs.